everybody, one another Infinity Code 1 Battle Report. We're on to the fourth mission from the Code 1 rulebook now, which is Firefight. Now, Firefight is kind of a more advanced version of Annihilation, and so I thought it would be useful to bring back the two armies from Annihilation that I used in the first video in this series to showcase how they would play in a firefight. So um, we're going to be using um, the White Banner Army of Yuqing versus the Winter Four of Pan Oceania, uh, and revisiting that mission this time around with uh, more sort of variations. So um, in Firefight, you're trying to kill more army points. That's a key feature. If you do manage to kill more models than your opponent in the game, you're going to get four objective points, which is actually the bulk of the points in this. But you're trying to have also more specialist troops survive. A specialist classified as anyone with a specialist skill or the specialist tag, such as doctors, paramedics, engineers, um, or hackers. Uh, as well as kill more of your opponent's specialists. So list composition, this one's pretty important. Well, you're gonna wanna have specialists to do things like push buttons, hack enemy troops, and of course bring people back to life, which is very key in this game. Um, you're also gonna want to uh, manage who is fighting in this mission because you will give up points for those people dying. In fact, in both of these uh, armies, quite a few models are specialists um, and that's gonna lead to, of course, some, some, some potential risk in the course of the game. Uh, and then finally, there are a special rule set for this particular mission, which is designated landing area. The prohibition on troops landing in your deployment zone is lifted. So uh, parachutes can show up in the rear um, and you do get a plus three physical mod for anyone with the air drone deployment special rule. So, Lots of um, sort of like tweaks in this one. You do get uh, the lieutenant points for lieutenant kills, and lieutenants are actually open information in this game. So you get to um, kill lieutenants, and if you kill more enemy lieutenants over the course of the game, as the lieutenant a token passes around, um, you will you will earn points as well. So slightly different from from annihilation, the core is still there: kill more army points and kill more lieutenants. But with the added sort of thing of specialists uh, surviving and specialists dying, and of course killing more lieutenants, the lieutenant keeps recycling and coming back. So we'll show you the table, we'll show you the forces, and we'll get this underway. So here's the Winter Four hanging out. Of course, open information. We have an Orc Lieutenant. We have Gunner the Troll Hunter. We have um, the Knight of Justice there with a the Spitfire. We have a Nice HMG, a Nice Hacker, a uh, Kune Sniper, a uh, Ninja, and then a Knock Troop with a Boarding Shotgun and an Infirmary with a Combi Rifle. On the Yuqing side, we've got a Hacktow Hacker, a Lieutenant Dao Fei Spitfire, three Zanshi Paramedics, a Jujack with a, um, what is it, a Multi Rifle? Uh, nope, Combat Rifle Heavy Flamethrower, uh, and then a Hundun Sniper, a Gwilang Skirmisher with a Boarding Shotgun, a uh, Tiger Soldier Paramedic, and then a Dill, the Specialist character. Here's our table all laid out for um, some firefights. Now again, trying to give at least uh, one of two deployment zones a slight advantage, so two buildings more in the deployment zone on this side, uh, with everything blocked in between the middle. Um, I've got two train sets here, one from Operation Caldster, and the other one is the um, Caldera. Uh, governmental train pack uh, that come came in wildfire and is available separately. That's perfect for a three by four foot table. Uh, finally, this is a three by four foot game mat from GameMat.eu, um, but I it's not not available for sale that I know of. I cut a six foot mat in half and made a three by three and a three by four, so I could play some um, code one with this. Right, so let's get right to our deployment roll. I'm sure you've watched enough of this to know how this works. Uh, we have a Lieutenant um, Willpower twelve here with the Orc and a thirteen on the Dao Fei. So fourteen, I think, is a no, it might be a crit, actually. He might be 14. Only 13, they both fail. So rolling again. 5 to 16 is a fail. So the uh, Yu Ching player can choose to go first or, uh, sorry, to retain initiative or to retain deployment. In this case, I think it's important to retain initiative, and they're going to choose to go first. Um, retain deployment, the Pano player will then choose the side, as it's a bit more advantageous, and uh, force the Ching player to deploy first. The Ching player deploys all except the Hacktown. We've got the Wheeling Skirmisher infiltrating up to here, along with the infiltrating Daofei Lieutenant, which has to be marked. Uh, the Jujak, Paramedic Zan Shi, and a Dill right there with a Paramedic Zan Shi prone, and uh, the Hunden Sniper standing up in camo. Another uh, Paramedic Zan Shi back here as a backup. Holding the Kune Sniper in reserve, we've got a Paramedic, um, uh, which we call it, uh, Fuselier, the Orc Troop Lieutenant, then we have the um, Knight of Justice, who should be, si everyone should be sideways at this point, in case any people come sneaking on the sides. Um, uh, as well as a Nice HMG prone. Nice back here watching the rear line in case any Tiger Soldiers show up. Uh, and then a uh, knock. We got Gunner and another Fusilier paramedic. Tau choosing to deploy up here and then, uh, or maybe up here actually. Yeah, it's nice to have a line of sight. There shouldn't be any way that anyone can see me. And the Kune Sniper then choosing to counter deploy over here just to keep this lane kind of blocked. First turn to Yu Ching. So 10 models, but uh, only nine in the order pool so far. Two, four, six, eight, nine, because 
the Tiger Soldier, of course, off board. It'll require some work to make a safe landing area, so I think the first thing we're gonna do is try and accomplish that. Last bet to do that is to get rid of this here, a cam marker. So we're gonna give an order, starting off to the Wheeling Skirmisher. They're gonna walk their four to here as a cam marker. Now, they'll have to reveal themselves in order to dodge um, or shoot me. Uh, and they can't do that right now, they have to delay actually because this is another camel marker. So it's, it's a marker versus marker fight right now. And that's in uh, sort of in the advantage of the, um, the first marker here. So delaying, because they have to, and then moving again. Second order for the Green Lang, they're gonna reveal themselves. Actually, they're gonna idle. They'll delay, and then they're gonna reveal themselves in order to make a discover roll. So the sniper could choose to shoot right now, and it would be unopposed. And it's almost worth doing because this might just take care of this fellow right now. And if he, but if he doesn't spot me, he can't try and see me again. So if we think about it, he'll be plus three for range. He's willpower 14, so 17, and then minus nine for mimetism and cover. So be on an eight. So it's less than 50% chance, or uh, we try for a shot with maybe our pistol, but we'd be at minus three for cover, minus three for mimetism, and then plus three for range. So we'd be on an eight. So we could go for an unopposed eight and just reveal ourselves, or we could just wait. I think we play chicken and wait. So does he get the eight or less? Yes, so he's revealed to be a Kune sniper. Hey, played off, and uh, the, the whatchamacallit, the uh, Gwilang's just gonna sort of move slightly. Actually, no, it wants to stay there. Doesn't want to get into the justice line of sight. So where are we at here? I guess we, do we dodge? We dodge on a 12, and they'll be plus six for shotgun, minus six for mimetism, minus three for cover. So it'll be on an eight versus a 12, but with two shots on eights. Oh, but actually the minus three, I forgot, the multi survivors are level one. Actually, he only, he needed an 11 to, to see him. Um, which means he's actually only at minus three mimetism and then uh, minus three for cover plus six. So it's straight dice on 11s versus his physical if he dodges, which would be a 12, or you could shoot back at 11 plus three to 14 minus six for mimetism and cover. So on an eight. Ninja, he's trained to kill. Then we're gonna go for the, the shot. So one shot on eight versus two shots on 11s. Uh, miss, and then miss, but one hit with a boarding shot. Shotgun projects a small template, which won't hit anyone else, but will reduce the cover of the target to zero. Uh, and that means that the Kune Sniper's armor of one versus damage 14, he'll have to roll a sweet, sweet 14 or better to beat it. He does not, he was unconscious. Oh, good job, Wulang. You did what you set out to do, but now you need to get out of line of sight. So another order on him, and he'll just move four. To make sure that no one can shoot him just now. And then four again, just to stay on the top step. It's feeling like attack tau time, because he's got some, some sweet business he can run. Uh, but we can also bring in the Tiger Soldier right now. I think maybe that's the game. So with the knock facing here, we could actually safely bring the Tiger Soldier, and I think right here. Just out of his line of fire, and also not see the Fusilier. It'd be really close. I think the Fusilier can still see him though. So I think actually we have to do something else first. Now let's give it over to the hack tau. And just stay in line of sight, move six and two, because no one can see the spot. Give him another one. And head up six and two to the edge here. And give him a third one to move six to this cover and then slide out to go see that Night of Justice. What are you gonna do there, Night of Justice? Oh, uh, you have a Spitfire. I think you dodge though. You dodge on a 14 right now versus you're gonna get a whole bunch of penalty, you'd be minus 12 to shoot. And the hack will reveal. And shoot a multi rifle. It'd be plus three for range, minus three for cover, so 14s with three shots AP uh, versus a dodge on a 14. How do we do? Uh, that's a critical dodge uh, to two hits, but they get canceled. And so, then Justice gets to just slide it on the site. And with two orders left, now it's worthwhile to bring this Tiger Soldier on their own order. And then give them an order to walk, I think, to the flank. Just going to here, staying on the line of fire. The Hacktail can do things out of line of sight, so it's actually worth their while to get totally out of line of sight and just walk to here. 
and then I think face this direction. Down face pretty happy where they are. They're just gonna go prone with the lieutenant because like why why bother letting you come get me? It's turn one for Pano. We've got ten hours go to nine because the Kinnis sniper is unconscious. Time to get to work. Let's start off with the knock troop. He's kind of in the wind right now. But I think he wants to hunt this tiger soldier. So staying out of line of sight. Now there is a sniper up here, unfortunately, but they have to reveal themselves if they wanted to come after me. So I think we just move our first four and say, come on, give it a try if you want. The sniper's pretty happy being in camo, so they decided to just idle. And the Nocturne moves again, four. And gets it on fire. For a second order, the niece decides he's gonna stand up. And just kind of look at that cam worker way over here. Now the niece does have a um, multi supervisor level 2 and a willpower of 13. So there's a very good chance on a 10 or less 50-50 that he'll be able to spot. Um, so, but it's worth wasting the order, because it's just one less order. And if he spots, something else happens. So make some try, 10 or less. And he fails, so now you can no longer spot this, this target. Effectively pins the niece, because the niece won't be able to do anything without potentially getting shot. Another order back to the knock troop. And he's going to come to the edge here and just eyeball this Tiger Soldier. Tiger Soldier has some choices here. Can shoot with the combi rifle, could dodge out a line of fire. Uh, the flamethrower is definitely not in range right now, so probably the most prudent bet would be to dodge on physical 12, um, because the knock has mimetism minus six, plus cover for minus nine. So going for the dodge, the knock troop's gonna fire his boarding shotgun. Zero for range, minus six for mimetism and cover. So he's, I believe, gonna need a six, actually. So a six or less on two shots. He'll use his teardrop template, Versus one dodge on a 12. 17 will fail and a one will hit. So that's a small template which will project back to here and ignore cover. So uh, armor two versus damage 14. He's a 13 or more. Unconscious. Now troops happy. All right. Well, that's that's gone well so far. Um, the other two could attempt to dodge. Prudent for them to do so. So at a Minus three? I thought Hacker could have also decided to hack and try and target that guy, but it didn't really make a lot of sense right here because he needs to turn around and actually face him. So the hack Tau Hacker, uh, see if it's relevant. Uh, it would be relevant, that'd be a critical if it's not minus three. The reason for that dodge roll because he's activated inside the zone of control of the model. And no penalty, so he can make a full dodge and he'll end up over here, being able to see that edge. And then for the, well, if I want a 12, he'll fail. At least the Nox can't get him out of cover if he wants to come around the corner. But I think he's gonna try. Now there's a nano pulser on this uh, hack tau, which makes him a little bit more dangerous if he just wants to eat the boarding shotgun shots. I feel like it's time to switch it up. We're gonna spend a lieutenant on the orc troop. He's gonna go six, he'll just walk and hurdle. Heading over to here. And then two more, just touch the cover. He realizes now he's in the rear arc of this hack tau. He's gonna try and blast him. So he's gonna walk back, going six to the edge, staying on the fire of the hundun, he should be able to clear. Just be able to see the hack tau, but also the Gui Lang. So I think it's time to shoot the Gui Lang. Gui Lang's gonna choose to dodge on a 12. He'd be at zero range with his shotgun, which would be bad. And he's gonna get shot with AP rounds from the um the whatchamacallit, the orc troop. Now he's at cover plus three, uh plus mimetism plus three. Uh so sorry, minus three. So it's minus six plus three for his range of his gun. So he'd be on elevens. Three shots on elevens versus one dodge on a twelve. And the eight will beat the two, and it'll be a single hit. Uh, armor one, Agui Lang, halved, not that it really matters. Uh, and then four for cover with the plus three, so it's gonna be beating nine. He does try again, just staying there. He did not activate inside zone of control, so there's no ARS from this fella. Um, and that means that, does he wanna dodge again or shoot? I think he wants to dodge again. A five will be beaten by an eight once more, and so does he pass his armor roll? 15, he does. Another one tries again. 11s, there's a critical hit, and a six would be a three, so three armor rolls now for the um, Gui Lang. All trying to beat eights. The five will take him down. He's on common order, and now he can go after the hack tile if he wants. Uh, unopposed, because he is being shot, but this guy will get to turn around if he lives. So three shots, all needing 14 minus six plus three, so 11s again, uh, and these are unopposed. Uh, so one, two hits, half armor, armor five goes down to armor of three. Multi rifles damage is 13, so 11s to succeed. 20 and 16, oh, you made the hack town mad and he turns around. We don't want to get too close, so I think what we're going to do is our next order, we're just going to move it on a fire. We don't lose lieutenant here. 
and we'll shoot again. Hacktown decides to shoot back with his multi-rifle, uh, hitting at a 14 goes to a 17 versus 11. Uh, so that's a critical hit, a 9, which will cancel the 6. That's three armor rolls now for the Hacktown. Whoa. 11s, 10 and a 5, he's unconscious. And one order left now for these guys. I think the Orc Troop just wants to get back out of line of fire. We've got the, para the paratrooper down. Just gonna go eight, get all the way back to the line of fire. And be happy with this turn. Not bad, Pano, blunting the advance. Uh, we're on to turn two, order count four, Yu Ching. We've got three down, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven orders in the order pool. Our lieutenant still. This is a mess, and that hack town needs to get saved, but unfortunately this knock troop is in the way. Also, we have the big M HMG toting fellow up here who is going to be problematic. So I think that's the first order of business. We're gonna go to the Hundun. Just gonna idle. It's moving slightly. Uh, delaying arrows over here. And then they'll reveal and shoot. So cover and surprise, no mimetism against his visor. Uh, he's gonna shoot back, both are inside 32. Uh, so that's gonna be plus three and plus three. So minus uh, surprise and cover, uh, but plus three for range, he'll be on a 10. And then two shots on 13s, uh, go to 10s because of mimetism. Let's see what happens, everyone's 10s all around. Uh, so the one will get canceled by the four, but the nine will hit. So that's a single AP round into the niece. Armor 3 goes to 2, plus 3 for cover, versus damage 15 on the sniper rifle, so it has to beat a 10. Nope, unconscious. Well, phase 1 of the plan appears to have worked. Six orders left. Unfortunately, phase 2 requires us to heal some unconscious guys and hope they don't die. Also deal with this knock troop who is also being problematic. There is a long play here. If this Zan Shi can get to back here and be outside of 24, they could potentially shoot unopposed, but at minus 9 against that guy. So we'd have three shots on threes and they wouldn't be able to shoot back. Do we go for it? Yes, we do. So one order, and this is she's gonna move here. Be just out of line of fire. Another order, they're just gonna slide back into cover and be able to see that, uh, that knock troop. Checking it is outside of 24, but within 32. So they're gonna spray their combi rifle. There's minus six for mimetism and minus three for range for minus nine. So on a one or a two, they'll hit, and this fellow can only dodge. Dodging on a 10, a one or a two will hit. We're just rolling for crits here. Oh, it's a one! But the 11's a success. Never mind, needed a 10. So hits once. We succeeded in our crazy wild plan. Uh, armor two on the knock. So uh, damage 13 on the combi rifle. It needs an 11. Beat an 11. Does not, unconscious for the knock troop. Well, okay then. We have four orders left to try and get people back online. And we really need to send a paramedic over to do it. So first skill, this paramedic's gonna go. Move four to here. Second skill, gonna move four up to here. Their order, they're just gonna keep on moving. Sting out a line of fire and go four. But attempt a shot on this Tiger Soldier. Because they're with an 8, so on a 14 or less, they miss. Third order, moving up 4 again to here. And now they'll attempt a shot on the Hacktow, because he's with an 8, on a 14 or less. Hits! Alright, so this is it, Hacktow. You are physical 14, you're going to come back to 1 wound if you make this. <laughs> he's dead. Last order. Gonna head into base contact with the Tiger Soldier and attempt to use the med kit again. Tiger Soldier's physical 12. Comes back to life. Just prone. Oh, yeah, well, don't win them all. <laughs> and that's turn. We managed to take out the knock troop um, and the niece, which was good for army points killing. Um, the knock troop was also, I believe, a specialist operative. Uh, no, actually, they weren't. Um, but we did unfortunately lose our hacked out, which is a big blow. Now, order count turn two for Pano. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, because he's unconscious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we need to repeat that from, or stop that from repeating, which means that I think we're going to go send, we want to send to go fight here. We got to deal with this sniper. We also have to deal with the fact that this fella is now super unconscious. Hmm. I think the Night of Justice just brutalizes the sniper. Takes an order. And starts walking, going six. Gonna come around the corner, stand in a line of fire. And then two to the edge. The rotor peeks out to see the Hunden up here on the top. 
Hunan's gonna shoot, I think, doing a double action round, because why not? It'll be two armor rolls, it's an anti-material round. Um, and it'll be plus three for range, minus three for cover, so it's gonna be on a 13. Night Justice, plus three for range, minus six for cover and mimetism, because she's within 24. One anti-material shot on a 13, and then these will be on 11s. 18 will miss, and that's four hits from Spitfires. Oh, she's gonna make a mess out of you. Uh, so four armor rolls, Hunden is armor, I believe two. Or three actually, plus three for cover, so six. Has to beat an eight four times. Uh, fails once and goes unconscious. And we left a paramedic there. <laughs> uh, and the Night Justice will continue her rampage, I suppose. Another order, comes around the edge to see this Zanshi. And she can't end on top of her friend, so she's just gonna go in. And she could shoot on a 14 with a single die, uh, or try and dodge on a 10. So it's better better off to shoot here on a 14. He's in cover, so it's a 14 as well for the Spitfire on the Night Justice, because she is just outside eight. 14 to 14, 20's gonna miss, and that's two hits from Spitfires. Okay, so she's armor one plus three for cover, so she needs to roll an 11 twice. So I'm gonna put her unconscious. The tire soldier's prone, um, but that will reveal her now because she will also go prone. And as we do, might as well walk up, stay outside of flamer range. Uh, the tiger soldier, I think, wants to dodge on a 12. She could shoot, but she really wants to get a line of sight there, so she could potentially medic all these folks when the uh, panel player runs out of orders. Dodging on a 12, uh, she has mimetism and cover in her favor, meaning it'll be minus six plus three, so 11s to 12s. A one, but the eight will hit. And so it's a single armor roll, armor two plus three for cover is five, has to beat a nine. She doesn't, three orders left. Well, another order. See if we can kill another paramedic. So zipping out to here to see this lady. 24, uh, so she's gonna dodge and try and go prone, I think, on a physical of 10, because she's gonna be a bad shot at that range, uh, versus plus three mastery, 14s for the Night of Justice. Passes with a nine, uh, and actually beats the eight and the four. So she's gonna move two inches and go prone. Just get behind this wall. Like later, Night of Justice. Two orders left, it's pretty important to get this model back up and running. So I think we're gonna go with the Infirmer Air. He's gonna go four and then four again to the top. And then second order, because no one can see, going to walk four into base to base and attempt to revive. Instead of a physical roll for the niece, it's a willpower roll for the Infirmer Air on a 13. Can he do it? Fails and kills him. That well, was worth a try. <laughs> And that's all the orders in the order pool, so it's back to the turn three now, final turn of the game, for Yu Ching. Order count, they got mauled pretty bad, so it's one, two, three, four, five orders left, but the lieutenant is still alive. Question now is how to deal with this Knight of Justice? Well, I think we're going to have to start with the Dao Fei, who's going to use the lieutenant order, and stand up, come to the edge of here. Uh, I think the Infirmary is going to want to dodge because he doesn't want to get in a gunfight with an invisible Spitfire. And he did just kill his friend, the niece. So the Dalfei will reveal itself and spray with the Spitfire. Um, and that is at plus three for range and minus three for cover. So it's on 13s with four dice uh, versus one dodge on 11 for the Infirmary. We've got a crit, a fail, and three more hits. So that's only five armor rolls that the infirmary has to make. At armor two, goes to five, so beat a nine five times. You'll be fine. You die three times. He gets blown to pieces. Five orders left to really deal with this Knight of Justice, and I think we have to. We're gonna try and stay in the line of fire. We're just gonna start walking, because now no one can see us. We're gonna go four and four down to here. Now, Night of Justice is going to try and dodge, because someone activated inside the zone of control, and fails. And then second order to do it again. And you go four and four, or sorry, six and two, actually, back to here. Out of line of fire. Does she make the dodge on a 15? 14? 20? No, fails. Oh my god. It's not great for her, because another order. And she will see him as he goes by, but he's going to go six into this cover. the other side of the cover so that the um, knight's not in cover. It'll shoot uh, and attempt to hit. One shot on a 14, minus three for mimetism goes to an 11. 
Uh, and that's going to be four shots at plus three, so on 16s. 20 is going to miss, and then that's one, two, three hits. Uh, damage 14 against armor five. Beat a nine three times. <sighs> Just dead. Two orders left, and we've taken a big chunk out of the offensive capabilities of Pano. So I think it's worthwhile to move to here. Move, move. No one in line of fire. And then last order, turn back into a can marker. Well, that was a significant turn, and a lot of dead army points now on the Pano side. Um, there is the potential to get some back though with this Fusilier. Order counts two for five orders remaining. And the, the problematic thing right now is neither one's lost lieutenants. They really need to try and kill one. Five orders to kill a lieutenant and also try and get this guy back online. Best bet at killing the lieutenant is probably the orc troop, but he's got one chance at spotting, and if he doesn't make that spotting test, he'll be he'll just be scuppered. He'll be a plus three, minus three. He's roll 12. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move our six to the edge, and then two more. Obviously gonna just idle and not bother doing anything because we wanna waste orders here. Uh, second order, gonna just come out six. Because why not? Get him out of cover. So again, game of chicken, there's no reason for the Dao Fae to reveal itself, because if it can, if, if this test has failed, then they cannot kill the lieutenant for the rest of the turn with this model. So it's going to be plus three for range, minus three for militism, and then plus, and that's it. So willpower 12. Passes, reveals it. All right, second order, moving to cover. He'll be out of cover for the first round, though, and try and take a shot. Uh, Dao Fae is going to try to, I guess, shoot back. He'll be at zero at this range. So it'll be a 13 for the Dao Fei, out of cover for this round, and then plus three, minus three for three shots with an AP rifle, or AP uh, multi-rifle with the um, orc troop. So 14s to 13. Uh, tunnel hit, 14's a crit though, and then another hit. So that's cancelled, and it's three armor rolls for the Dao Fei. Uh, armor three halves to two, and no cover, so he's got to beat an 11 three times. 12 to 12! <laughs> that just makes a mockery of him. Oh my god. All right, well, um, that looks like uh, third order is going to be in order, and he'll try again. So, do we want to shoot? He'll be in cover now, so it'll be 10. I think he dodges. He'll dodge on a 14. Sorry, 13? He'll dodge on a 14 versus shots on 14s. So, going for it, 14 against 14. Uh, the three will be beaten by the five, so one more hit. Has to beat an 11. Does, getting so sporty. All right, here we go. Another dodge. Uh, the seven will beat the one, but not the eight. So he has to make another armor roll. Uh, so beat an 11. Does not, takes a wound. This is it last word of the game. He has to try and kill more lieutenants because it's worth more points. So final shot of the game. BS 14 versus a dodge on 14. Does the orc get him? An eight canceled by a nine. This is it, the whole roll. One roll. If he rolls a 12 plus, I think Yu Ching wins the game. One, he's unconscious. All right, so now we gotta look for points here. So for four points, more army points killed. Uh, so Yu Ching has killed five for the, um, the Knight of Justice, uh, plus two for the Firmware is seven, plus three for the Orc is 10. Uh, plus three for the Kunai Ninja is going to be 13. 14, 15 for the Knock Troop. On the Yu Ching side, they've lost their Hundun for three. Uh, they've lost one Zanshi for four. They've lost the Dao Fei for five, which is going to make it nine. They lost the Hak Tao for six, which is going to be 15. And then they lost their Tiger Soldier for three more, which is going to be 18. Dao Fei totally tipped it over. It would have been 13 to 15 otherwise. Um, and so more army points goes to Pano, uh, which is going to be four points overall. Pano has given up one, one specialist. Uh, on the other side, they've given up one, two, two specialists. So more specialist kills is also going to go to Pano. It gives them five overall. And then to have more remaining specialists, Pano has one, two, three, four specialists remaining versus one, two, three specialists. And so that will also go to Pano for two more. And that's gonna give them a grand total of seven. 
Now they killed a lieutenant, which is more lieutenants. Eight, nine. Nine, nothing for Pano at the end of the game. This is a very opposed uh, mission where if you gain points, you tend to remove them from your opponent as well. So I'm not surprised by the big landslide score because it's very hard for both sides to score points uh, on these separate objectives, except for the specialist one. So there you go, the last of the four core missions from the Code 1 rulebook in my tutorial series. Um, and a variation on Annihilation with some focuses on, again, preserving certain models and killing certain other models. Uh, that was a big final round of the game, that Dao Fei tipping it in favor um, from the, uh, the, the, the Pano sort of like very close game to a victory for um, Pano that was a little more decisive. Uh, if they had not lost the Dao Fei there, they would have scored four for having more army point kills. Uh, and then the flip side would have been, I think the tiebreaker would have, and they, and they also wouldn't give up lieutenants. So it would have been 4-3 for Yu Ching if the Dao Fei had just survived to the end of that turn um, because it would have just been specialist kills and specialist survived uh, for Pano at that point. So a big swing at the end, but again, about applying appropriate measures and having that third round of the game in this is very, very key. Sometimes going second can be very um, important in certain missions because you have that last chance to scramble for points and make a big play on your last order, which Pano did in this case. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, we're going to play some... 25 point games uh, using the uh, Shazvasti in 012 uh, more going forward and hopefully I'll have some live real bodied opponents uh, <laughs> as we as we move towards um, less social isolation and uh, more of me being able to record with live bodies again. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you for more Infinity in the future. Text time Ash at Port Gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Grid Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.